brain rot. We always love a good brain rot. Hello everyone, welcome to a new cosplay walkthrough. Today, <laughs> it is currently late April of 2023 and Welcome Home is everywhere. Um, it actually took me quite a long time to get into this because I watched, um, I'm not gonna say whose video it is because I'm gonna, I found it boring. Right, uh, I don't want to insult anybody's video, but I watched a video from a YouTuber um, about Welcome Home and I got really bored and was like, okay, whatever, I, okay, I'm not into this. And then I watched Hannah the Horrible's video recently. Um, she does like a very organized, very like nice and concise video on Welcome Home, goes through all the secrets, goes through everything. And I was like, ah, ah, ah now this, I can, latch on to this. This is great. Thank you, Hannah. Hannah did a great job. So um, thank you, Hannah the Horrible. Now I have a new, I hope, hyperfixation because it's been a long time. Like I've pretty much gone this whole year without having a hyperfixation and it's a very awkward and like kind of depressing place to be. So, you know, got to make that neurodivergent brain happy. So it's only been like a few days, but I've already decided that I'm going to cosplay from it. And it's pretty obvious who I'm going to cosplay, like not even from like the the thumbnail or whatever like you can obviously see before this video even starts who I ended up cosplaying but I'm sure I'm sure even if I hadn't told you who I was cosplaying you'd probably all be like I know um it's Julie obviously I saw her design and I was like that's my vibe that is a hundred millions percent my vibe so had to do it and it was it's a really cute design uh i have a wig that will already work i can use my star butterfly wig um i have a pattern that would work and um it looks like looks like a pretty straightforward thing to put together aside from the scalp hem and the um gradient tights looks pretty uh pretty straightforward to do so fingers crossed but yes that's what we're gonna be doing if you didn't know i love args you might say that welcome home is not an arg i regard it as an arg i love args i cosplay from pet Scop. my favorite arg is probably local 58 yeah i just i love like creepy sh it doesn't seem like it given that i'm very much like a soft pastel kind of aesthetic of a person but on the inside a little creepy things um not like gory things i don't i can't handle gore but i like like analog horror and ARGs and lost media and stuff like that. So this happened to be right up my alley. You know, it's 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 cute and spooky. Exactly what I look for. You know, it looks wholesome, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So um, the plan is I'm going to cosplay with my friend Max, who's going to be Frank, and I'm going to be making both cosplays. Um, for this video, I'm just going to show you how I made my Julie cosplay. I don't know if I'll make a video about the Frank cosplay. And um, yeah, that's basically the plan. Let's get into it. So for the fabric, I went to my favorite fabric store, which is Dresso in downtown Vancouver. They have an amazing selection and really reasonable prices, so I love going there. So for the dress and the pink trim, I got this stretch sateen. And then for the yellow trim, I just got broadcloth. Then I started work on the bodice of the dress. So here I am cutting it all out. For the dress, I am using McCall's M6989, which is one of my favorite patterns. Once I was done cutting out all the pattern pieces, I gave them a good ironing because after washing them, they got wrinkly. Always make sure you wash your fabric. Very important, especially when you're working with cotton, you want it to shrink before you start working on it. And then I just sewed the whole thing together following the instructions on the pattern. And I also zigzagged all my edges just to keep them from fraying and to make them nice and proper. This is very important. And then for the Peter Pan collar, I actually used a pattern that I got off of the internet just for that piece because I lost a piece from the pattern that I'm actually using. So I had to kind of start from scratch there. So I'm just using this one that I got online. So I cut that out and then I cut two pieces out of some white fabric that I had left over from another project, sewed them together and then turned them inside out and gave them a good pressing to make the collar. Then I sewed it uh, sandwiched in between the dress and a piece of fabric. So that when I flip that top piece of fabric back, it'll make a nice finished edge. Hopefully that makes sense. Then I flipped that top piece of fabric back 
and gave it a good pressing to keep everything in place. Then I went ahead and pressed all of my seams, very important for a nice crisp garment. And then I worked on the sleeves. So for the sleeves, I'm actually using a different pattern. I'm using this puffy sleeve pattern from this pattern here, which I will show on screen because I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Um, but her sleeves are very big. So I actually lengthened the sleeve pattern by about eight inches, which ended up working super well. It, was, it came out the perfect length and it was really easy to do. Then I just followed the instructions on the pattern to actually sew the sleeves and I sewed those to the armholes of the dress. Puffy sleeves are super easy to do, so this was very simple. Then I worked on the tie. So for the tie, I just cut out this really long pill shape out of my yellow fabric in two pieces. Then I sewed those two pieces together, making sure to leave an opening so that I could turn it all inside out afterwards. Turned that inside out and then gave it a good pressing. And then I top stitched everything so that it would close the hole that I left to turn everything inside out. Then I just gathered it in the middle and then I made a long strip like this, turned that inside out and pressed it. And then I don't have footage for this uh, because I forgot to film it, but I just hand stitched that little strip around where I gathered the tie in the middle and then hand stitched that to the Peter Pan collar. Next, I worked on the skirt. So the skirt was probably the most challenging part of this cosplay just because of the scalloped hem. So I began by cutting everything out, sewing it all together, zigzagging my edges, pressing, and then I laid the whole thing down and took a plate to use as a stencil for the scalloped hem. So here's what I did. I also put a piece of tape on the middle so I know where the middle of the plate was and therefore knew where to stop drawing, if, if that makes sense. Then I just cut that all out. Very satisfying to watch this back, honestly. Then for the colored part of the scalloped hem, this I kind of didn't really know what I was doing. Like I had a system down, but I don't know if this is like the proper way to do a colored scalloped hem. So just keep that in mind. Um, basically for the yellow, since it's gonna get covered up by the pink that goes over top, I just traced everything out. And this was super easy to do because it's broadcloth, so it's very sheer. Uh, then cut that out. And I had to do this into two pieces and then just sewed those two pieces together to make one long piece. Then I pinned all of that to the skirt, but I pinned it on the opposite side, like the wrong side of the skirt, not the front facing side of the skirt, so that I could then flip it forward and make a clean hem. So hopefully that makes sense here. I am sewing it. And then I just flipped everything forward, as you can see, and gave it a really good ironing so that it would all be um, nice and flat and hopefully not too wrinkly. There are some puckers on there, but like, I feel like that's kind of part of it for the course when it comes to scalp hems, especially when it's my first time doing a scalp hem. Then I did a top stitch to keep everything in place. And I also zigzag stitched the top part of that edge just to keep it down and to keep it from fraying. And again, I didn't worry about that top edge just because it's gonna be covered up by the pink. Then for the pink, I took some tissue paper. This is where things get super sketchy. I don't know if I was doing everything correctly. Um, probably definitely not, but like this was the, this was what I decided to do. Um, so I took some tissue paper because I didn't have any tracing paper and I just sketched over where the pink would lie just so that it matches the edges of the yellow. And then I cut that out to make a pattern and I just sketched that out onto the pink, measured everything to make sure it would be the right thickness. The finished measurement was about one and a half inches before seam allowance. Um, always make sure that you add seam allowance when you're doing stuff like this. And then I sewed that all together, gave it a good pressing and then sewed that down onto the skirt. And honestly, it didn't work super well. Um, like it looks okay, but it's, it's definitely not perfect. But it was my first time doing a scalloped hem, especially a colored scalloped hem. Um, so, you know, I'm just working with what I got, you know, it's not gonna be perfect the first time, so that's okay. And then I just sewed the skirt to the bodice. Then I worked on the belt. So I used the same material that I used for the Peter Pan collar and just cut that out in a long strip, sewed that together, zigzagged the edges, gave it a good pressing, and then I added my belt buckle. Uh, I had to make a little hole to accommodate the belt buckle, so I used my steam ripper for that. And then I burned the edges of the hole so that they wouldn't fray. And here's what that looks like with the belt buckle on. And then I just sewed that in the back right over the waistline of the dress.
Next, we move on to the tights or leggings or whatever you'd like to call them. So for this, I just took a pair of leggings that I already had and cut around them to kind of make a loose pattern. And since these are going to be footed, I took some socks and just lay them at the bottom of the leggings and cut around those to give me the right shape. Then I used a zigzag stitch to sew that all together. I'm of course also using a stretch material. This is actually the same material I used for my Frankenstein bodysuit. And then I took an elastic for the waistband and sewed that in. I sewed it right around the waist of the leggings and then folded that edge over and sewed it again to give a nice clean edge. Then I just painted that using the leather paint that I had left over from my Jenny cosplay because as you guys know if you saw that video I had so much of it left over and it turns out you can use leather paint on fabric so a win-win situation. So I just painted a nice little gradient on there and that's it for the tights. Finally, we're gonna be working on the horns. So for these, I used foam clay. So I just followed the reference and made these little kind of, um, I wanna say bow shaped. They kind of look like little bow buns. Um, made these little bow shaped horns. And then I just pushed some magnets into the bottom so I could use them with the Cosband Pro. I did later actually use Gorilla Glue on these to keep them in place because they ended up coming out. So I recommend pushing them in the bottom for the shape and then just gluing them once the horns are actually dry. Then I waited 24 hours and finally painted them using acrylic paint. Then finally to seal it all I used some Mod Podge. This is going to give it a nice glossy finish and it's going to help protect the paint and make the horns just a little bit sturdier by having a protective layer. And that's it for the construction process. So let's move on to the final reveal. Okay, so we are doing a very chill outro because um, I am very tired from work. My feet really hurt and I didn't feel like doing like a proper outro. Yes, my makeup is smudged. Yes, I am a mess, but you know what? It's okay. We're just gonna roll with it. Um, yes, I am filming this on my phone instead of on my camera. So anyway, that is my walkthrough for Julie. Overall, I'm very happy with this cosplay. Um, aside from a couple of things, but I'm cutting myself some slack. The scalped hem looks very rough. It looks very rough. Like a lot of people, when I was posting it to my Instagram story, a lot of my friends were like, oh, it looks really good. And I think it like photographed well in those work in progress photos, but in reality, and you can see it in the like studio photos that I took, um, it doesn't look that great, but it was my first time ever doing a scalped hem. So I am cutting myself some slack um, because obviously first time doing something complicated, it's not gonna go very well necessarily. I think it's fine. I think we can excuse that. And maybe my next one will be better. Maybe you guys will have some tips in the comments for how I can make one better. So yeah, learning opportunity. Also like, I think I could have styled my wig better. So that's just a little thing that I, can do for next time. I definitely want to do like an outdoor full body photo shoot for this cosplay. The video and photos that you guys saw was just like a cause test. So, you know, everything that you saw there will be improved upon. So the wig, I feel like I could do better. Um, so I will definitely do that better. There's a bit of a debate on what her horns actually look like because somebody like commented on one of my Instagram posts that went live before this video. The references that I was following, they're both like, the same but there are some references of her horns where they are different i i don't know and at this point i don't really care because um i put a lot of work into the horns that i did make i'm really happy with how they look i think they look adorable are they necessarily canon no but is that okay yes absolutely so uh yeah anyway those are a few wrap-up thoughts for my julie cosplay 
Um, overall, I'm very excited to learn more about Welcome Home and get more into it and stuff and have this cosplay for when it hopefully becomes a hyper fixation. So yeah, anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you'd like to see more videos like this, um, feel free to subscribe. I put out new videos every Sunday and it'd be awesome to have Ooh, I can't speak. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? I put out new videos every Sunday and it'd be awesome to have you here. So feel free to subscribe to see more. And um, yeah, see you guys all in the next one. Okay, bye. Wait, I didn't do my outro. What the? That's how tired I am. I can't even think straight. I'll see you guys all in the next one. But until then, Patty Faces, please be sure to take care. Bye.